Good morning. Uh, you probably wouldn't have known it, but I saw something here this morning that I've actually never seen in all the years I've done ministry. And that is, uh, there's a young man that's part of our church that's getting married at four o'clock today. And he was here <laughs> with his soon-to-be father-in-law sitting side by side and worshiping together. How many think that's a great way to start a day? Yeah. So glad that you're here, and those who are joining us online, glad that you are with us as well. Uh, something spectacular happened this week. I hope you got some glimpses of it. Uh, we got our first images from the James Webb Space Telescope, and they are unbelievable. They're stunning. We've actually captured pictures now of stars dying and stars being birthed, planets orbiting around suns that we didn't even know existed. That's interesting because planets and suns, stars are all in orbit around something. And so are you. Your life orbits around something. I think prayer is what helps keep our life in orbit around God. And without it, the tendency is not to just drift, but maybe careen into areas that we would never wish to go, but can find ourselves in. Scripture teaches us about God, but prayer keeps us connected with God. Now, anyone can pray, and in fact, everyone does at some point, whether you're a religious person or not. If you experience enough complications or enough pain, it seems as though the natural instinct of the human heart is to have a conversation or to ask for help from someone that is unseen in your life. Where does that instinct come from? And why does prayer seem easy sometimes and hard at other times? Uh, why does regular prayer, consistent prayer, seem so challenging for us to do? Why does prayer seem to work sometimes and it doesn't seem to work at other times? Well, this is something that I strongly believe. I believe that prayer is the method that God uses to bring his will into our world. Let me say that again. Prayer is the method that God uses to bring his will into our world. Jesus actually taught us to pray that God's will would be done on earth just as it is in heaven. Uh, there's a pastor that I know down in Maryland, and he says this. He says, when you pray to God regularly, irregular things happen on a regular basis. I think that's true. What's interesting about prayer is it doesn't just change the circumstances around us. Prayer actually changes us. People who pray actually approach the demands of life and the opportunities of life differently than people who don't pray. This is something that God has always intended for his creation, to be in this ongoing conversation with him. Now, I'd like to talk about two assumptions that people have that can keep us from praying. And the first is, is that we assume that God doesn't like us. We assume that God is kind of angry. He might even be vindictive. He's restrictive. The truth is, is that God is actually generous and he's kind and he's loving and he loves to bring freedom to people's lives. But we can assume that mostly because we've heard angry voices that claim to be speaking for God. And so we assume that God sounds like them. Uh, I'm very grateful that God doesn't actually sound like them. The way scripture describes God is that his, his love has no limits and his grace has no measure and his power has no boundaries. And he is so generous that out of his riches in Jesus, he just keeps giving and giving and giving. It puts it this way in scripture. It said a smoking wick he will not snuff out or a bent reed he will not break. That's how scripture describes the God that you and I have the privilege of having a conversation with. So 
Some people think God doesn't like them, that he plays favorites, but he really doesn't. He, he treats us all with love and respect. But there's a second assumption, and the second assumption why we don't pray is that we don't like God. The first one is he doesn't like us, but the second is we don't like him. Maybe you asked him for something and you didn't get it. Maybe something bad happened in your life and you blame him for it. Maybe we think that he plays favorites and he does things for some people, but not for you. We've all experienced disappointments and frustrations in life. We know what that's like. And sometimes because of that, out of that experience, we can fashion in our imagination what God looks like when actually it's nothing that looks like the God of heaven and earth. Now, prayer is so necessary and essential and helpful that Jesus, the living Son of God, actually was a person of prayer. Before he launched his ministry, he prayed. Before he selected his disciples, he prayed. Before he fed the thousands with very little food, he prayed. When, when he was about to face death in the garden, he prayed. When he was on the cross suffering, he prayed. He prayed through every season and circumstance of his life. And his disciples also became people of prayer. It tells us in Acts, the first chapter, that whenever they gathered together, they were constantly in prayer. One day, the disciples found Jesus praying, and they asked him, would you teach us to do what you are doing right now? And they were given the greatest prayer lesson in history. And so what I'd like you to do right now is we are going to recite this prayer together. The words are on the screen, so you don't have to depend on memory, though many of us have memorized it. Let's declare this out loud and together. And by the way, I, let's use our outside voice today, okay? I know we're inside. Let's use our outside voice today. All together, ready? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. God knows that we actually have a tendency to complicate prayer. It just seems like as soon as someone gets a little spiritual knowledge, we try to make this more complicated than it is. In fact, that passage that we just read came out of Matthew, the sixth chapter. Here is the message translation of the verses that just preceded. This is what Jesus had to say. Here's what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simply and honestly as you can manage. And the focus will shift from you to God. And you will begin to sense his grace. The world is full of so-called prayer warriors who are prayer ignorant. They're full of formulas and programs and advice, peddling techniques for getting what you want from God. Don't fall for that nonsense. This is your father you're dealing with, and he knows better than you what you need. How many can say amen to that? Aren't you glad that God is your father, and he knows even better than you what you actually need? So I think that there are some things that you don't tend to hear from people when it comes to prayer, things that people don't talk about. And I'd like to look at a few of those this morning. And the first is that everyone prays. That's right, everyone. It's not just a ritual for religious people. If things are complicated or painful enough, people pray. The word prayer originally in Latin is, is the word precarious. When life gets precarious, we tend to pray. Everyone prays. Even a person who says they don't believe there's a God has had a moment when they've prayed, and they will have another one. It's just true. Secondly, you can pray anywhere. 
You don't have to be in a religious setting. You don't have to be surrounded by religious icons. God is everywhere, and he is not too busy to talk to you. In fact, if anyone is too busy for prayer, it's always us, never him. You can talk to God wherever you are because he is with you wherever you are. Thirdly, you can pray your feelings. Some people say, I don't know what to pray about. Well, I know that some people put together a list of things. They might have a few things on a list, and, and they might get a little bored praying for that same list every day. But you actually have some feelings that you could pray. If you're happy, you could pray your joy. If you're tired, you could pray your fatigue. If you're lonely, you can pray your loneliness. If you're sad, you can pray your sorrow. We should stop pretending that we have to feel a certain way in order to have a conversation with God. Stop assuming that you have to say things in a certain way and in a certain tone for God to be able to respond favorably to you. You know people like that. That you have to say things a certain way in a certain tone and you don't like them. Don't assume that God is like that. What's interesting, too, is that sometimes a prayer that feels bad might actually do the most good. Sometimes when we go to pray, we just feel completely unspiritual. And, and we get, maybe we don't even have much hope that God will do anything about it. Maybe it seems too overwhelming, or maybe we're too late to the challenge to make any difference. And so we just kind of squeak out some prayer about it. But it's absolutely fascinating that what is required for that moment is actually a lot of faith. It's not just because you feel hopeful or confident. It's not because the situation seems easy to resolve. It's not because you feel that you're especially strong or that other people are especially open to something. There's an inner part of your heart that is actually connected to faith in the one who rules over everything. And out of that comes some very select and special words. And regardless of how you feel, they can make a huge difference in your life and in our world. Here's another thing people might not tell you about prayer. Prayer is work. Prayer is work. Prayer is how you work on your relationship with God. Now, there's a common myth in our culture today that if you ha are really in love with someone, you don't have to work on the relationship, right? That's how you know it's real love. Yeah. People say it slightly different. They'll just accept me as I am. Well, of course they'll accept you as you are. But your greatest goal in life to stay as you are for the rest of your life? Let's just check. How many married people do we have in the house today? How many have changed at least one thing since you got married? Yeah. <laughs> Some of you say, I don't even recognize myself anymore. I don't know who I became. Some people think a real loving relationship is one you don't have to work on. And that's why so many relationships wind up drifting and dying because they don't work out. Who told you that relationships don't take work? If we only go to God when we're in a crisis, an interesting thing happens. He doesn't say, I'm tired of you only showing up in a crisis. But we start feeling guilty about only going to him in a crisis. And our tendency is to keep our distance. It's possible for that relationship to survive, but it won't really thrive. Uh, fifthly, uh, you can make prayer time more enjoyable. People don't tell you this. You can make prayer time more enjoyable. Well, let's just check this morning. How many really enjoy a good cup of coffee? Yeah. How many enjoy, prefer tea? Let's just check. Okay. That's about what I expected. Yeah. And do you know you can actually have coffee with God? I have a secret suspicion that God actually doesn't want to talk to me before I've had my coffee. I, I don't know if that's true, but I've wondered sometimes if that was true. You know, I feel him whispering, get your coffee, then we'll talk. You know? <laughs> 
Find a time in the day that works for you. Some people are morning people. God bless you. Some people are evening people. God bless you. Pick a time that works for you and engage in a conversation with him. So I don't know what to say. You can just have a conversation, but you could begin with the Lord's Prayer, like we just began this message this morning. And you could continue on by just looking at something in God's Word and then listening to see if God would bring a thought or an insight to your mind. It could be super helpful for the challenges that you're facing. You could express thankfulness for something that's gone well in your life. Or you could ask for forgiveness for the thing that you did or failed to do, that if you had to do over again, you would do differently. It's amazing how powerful those conversations can be. The sixth thing that people tend not to tell you about prayer is that the best way to start is by stopping. Just pause. Uh, there's a thing that I'll do and it's, I set an alarm or a, a little timer on my phone for two minutes, and I'm just going to sit quietly in God's presence for two minutes. And my only thought is, I'm just here right now with you. That's it. I'm not trying to do anything else. Just be present. I'm not trying to do something for God. I'm not asking for anything yet. I just want to be with him. And you would be surprised how long two minutes feels when nothing else is going on. Pause. Why is it good to pause? Because we are not God. And the simple truth is, our world will continue on even if we take a minute to pause. Some of us think, I don't have a minute in my day. I'm going to challenge your thinking. Maybe your problem is not that Everyone depends on you so much. Maybe you think you're more important than you actually are. Pause. There are two people that I know, and both of them have gone to heaven this week. And life is going to go on without them, as hard as it will be. They're dearly devoted followers of Jesus and have been generous with their lives. And they are no longer with us. But for all of us, life will continue to go on. Pause. Take a moment. Because our soul needs silence as much as our lungs need air. Our souls suffocate in constant noise. Now, here's the challenge for most people. Most of us fall into one of two categories. They're not extreme always, but there's a tendency towards extroversion or introversion. And introverted people kind of prefer the quiet. And extroverted people struggle with quiet. Like they'd rather be with a group of people than alone. And I find it fascinating that in our faith, God calls us to do two things that's hard for each one. He calls all of us into community. And for extroverts, they, they love that. It's more people, the better. For introverts, they're going, oh, dear God, can I please get a break? It's Sunday already. Do I have to go to church? I'm talking to you online right now. <laughs> you found a way to stay home and stay connected. Yeah. And... And then, and then there is this idea that, that you, you have a moment of silence. And for extroverted people, that's, that's really hard. Introverted people need community and extroverted people need silence. Slow down, catch your breath, relax. Because God whispers. If you're waiting for God to shout louder than every voice in our world, you will miss him. We don't serve a screaming God. He has gentle whispers that will breathe life into us in ways that we couldn't possibly imagine. I'm going to ask the worship team to come out.
You can be with God and allow your focus to move from, from what you want or what is wrong to who God is. And when you do that, it's amazing what kind of internal recalibration starts occurring. Uh, lastly, you can actually sing prayer. This is something that I wish I'd learned earlier in my life because I do appreciate a melody and I do appreciate a lyric. And for whatever reason, it's just the way I'm wired, I always seem to have some song and some rhythm going on in my head. That is a source of annoyance to some people in my life. You can sing a song that declares something about the truth of God or maybe about the truth of what you're going through in life. But it's a great way to begin a season of prayer. Well, my voice isn't good. I know uh, none of our voices is as good as Andre Batelli. He's the most searched YouTube voice on YouTube. And I think when he sings, I think the angels in heaven fold their wing and bow their heads and God tells them that's what it's supposed to sound like. <laughs> but he's a loving father. And I don't know anything that brings more joy to the heart of a father than to hear their child's voice. It makes a difference. So I have a homework assignment for you. The homework assignment is uh, try an experiment this week. Every day, at some point in it, pause. Pray the Lord's Prayer. Let that be kind of the, at least the starting ground for other thoughts that you might have you want to share. Paul said it this way. He said, I want people everywhere, people everywhere to lift up holy hands Without wrath, we can do without the fists. Without arguing, because most people think that religion is all about proving to other people that you're right. And without doubting, because when we doubt, we tend to cling to things that actually hold us back than releasing things that can move us forward. And so this morning, I want us to end the way we started. I'd like us all to stand. And I would like us to lift holy hands. And, and this is the position I'm recommending for you this morning. Just simple arms out, hands open. And why is this a great position? Because what it says is, whatever God desires from me, I'm willing to give. Whatever God desires to give me, I'm willing to receive. It's a great position for our hands to be in. And once again, I want us to declare the Lord's Prayer, lifting holy hands in this place, out loud and together with me this morning. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Can we just thank God this morning?